Now, again, if you've read a little bit of Steve Bannon, you would recognize a lot of this in Steve Bannon. Um, and over last weekend, you know, there was a, um, there was a, a, a conference, first of its kind, first ever conference, for what I now called, and I, and I talked about this when I talked about the, the, the conservative civil war, uh, what I now called uh, the national conservatism or conservative nationalism or nationalist conservatives or however you want to call it. And it was launched at, a, at the Ritz-Carlton in Washington, D.C. And it had all the big-time conservative thinkers, thinkers in quotes, I would say. Um, there, were, there was the former founder of the American Enterprise Institute that used to be kind of pro-free market. Uh, John Bolton from the Trump administration. Uh, of course, Tucker Carlson was there. The, the guy who organized the conference was an Israeli intellectual. These Israelis everywhere. Israeli intellectual, um, who uh, Yoram Hazoni, who has uh, got a book, and uh, I, Ilan Jonah from the Iron Man Institute just wrote a uh, critique of this book. Uh, in, def in, uh, in defense of uh, nationalism is his book. It's a book about the good, all the beauty of nationalism. Anyway, they held this conference, and the key was that there was one rallying call. One rallying call that conservatives, new conservatives, this new conservative movement needs to rally around. And that is no more worshiping at the altar of free markets at the expense of the middle class. Now, this makes me laugh for a number of reasons. I don't remember any conservatives worshiping at any altar other than the Christian altar, other than the pragmatist altar other than the power lusting altar, but at the altar of free markets? Name me a conservative. Name me a conservative who is a real promoter of free markets, fully and consistently. <sighs> but even that mild defense of free markets the conservatives engaged in is too much, too much for this new breed of conservatives. Tucker Carlson, of course, was their media representative. Of course, that's one rallying cry. The other one is no more endless wars dedicated to slaying perceived monsters overseas. Perceived. Osama bin Laden, ISIS, you know, I don't know, uh, Al Qaeda, only perceived monsters. No more shame about saluting the flag, defending borders, and demanding assimilation. So, abandon free markets, rile up the nationalism, build a wall, worship the flag, and stop intervening in wars overseas. But crucially, forget about this free market stuff. We have to defend American, American capital A, big letters, American interests, whatever those are. We have to save American jobs. We have to bring manufacturing back to America. Yeah. I mean, this is where, this is where they are. From the talk show radio host, Rush Limbaugh, Mark Levin, Tucker Carlson, they are anti-markets, anti-founding fathers, anti-individual rights, anti-individual liberty. They are anti-everything that at least some conservatives in the past believed in, or at least said they believed in, even though they couldn't defend it. They are the negation of America. They are the stabbing in the back of everything that is America. They are no different than Elizabeth Warren and AOC. They are un-American. And they're idiots on top of that because they have no basis for these arguments. They are no basis for these arguments. And they don't understand economics. And of course, they're nativists. They're real nativists. Ah, thank you. It was getting hot. <laughs> I'm thanking somebody for reminding me to take my headphones off. <sighs> so
So, you know, I, 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 I want to talk a little bit about, we've talked about the economics, um, but if you think about tariffs, Elizabeth Warren believes in tariffs. She says so in her economic patriotism thing. These new econo these new um, conservative nationalists believe in tariffs. Elizabeth Warren wants to promote manufacturing jobs in the United States and economic, uh, you know, promote companies that, that produce in America. So do the economic nationalists. Elizabeth Warren wants to do everything she can to help the so-called middle class. So did the economic nationalists. I mean, as I said, no more worshiping at the altar of the free market at the expense of the middle class. The GOP today, or these nationalists at least, are pro manipulate using the tax code to favor their kind of businesses at the expense of others. They're pro using tariffs, which is a tax, to protect some businesses at the expense of others. And of course, they're massively, all of them across the entire board, are pro using regulations to attack business, profit, Wall Street, finance, anything that they deem as globalist, internationalist, as not consistent with their vision, their narrow vision of what America should look like. And of course, it's much worse than that. Because it's not just that the national conservatives the conservative nationalists are just anti-capitalism. And by the way, I will get to your super chat questions. I'm actually going to copy them so I don't lose them in the stream. But um, it's not just that they are that they hold these um, um, bad economic ideas, but they hold these bad economic ideas in the context of nationalism, in the context of a much broader agenda, which is just as dangerous, which is the nativist agenda, the agenda that is focused on American values, which are not American values, which are focused on immigration, what they call assimilation, but they don't really believe in assimilation, but in the social issues what they call today the social issues. And this is, where, this is where there is conflict between the left and the right. Some conflict. Both oppose immigration for economic reasons. I've told you many times before that, you know, uh, Bernie Sanders is anti-immigration, Elizabeth Warren is anti-immigration because it lowers wages. So they are anti-immigration for economic reasons, and both parties agree on that. The real you know, difference between them is their approach to issues surrounding race. And it's hard for me to say this because I don't want to sound hysterical and I don't want to sound like I'm, you know, just lost it. But the fact is that these economic, these, these uh, sorry, conservative nationalists are promoting a racist ideology. They deny it Half the conference was them saying we're not racists. But they're also saying we need to skew immigration towards Europeans. We need not job-based, not skill-based, but race-based, or what they would say culture-based, because we know that people are 100% determined by their culture. This is the danger, as I said yesterday, with evolutionary psychology and this idea that one is determined, one has no free will. You are product of where you came from. That's what's fundamentally racist about Donald Trump's tweets. He says you are product of where you came from. That's the first sentence in that first tweet. You can find it and you can see it. So here's what a University of Pennsylvania law professor Amy Wax said on a panel on immigration. And Amy Wax is a well-known conservative and certainly a member of this conservative nationalism. She said, immigrants are too loud. 
and they're responsible for an increase in litter. She explicitly advocated for an immigration policy that would favor immigrants from Western countries over non-Western ones. The position, she put it, that our country will be better off with more whites and fewer non-whites. Now, I don't know how you get more explicit than that. Our country will be better off with more whites than fewer non-whites. So while the conference organizers made a concerted effort not to invite any so-called alt-right people, and a number of alt-rights were kicked out, and of course uh, the organizers, because both the organizers I think are Jewish, uh, they were later, you know, the, the alt-right attacked them with all kinds of anti-Semitic uh, uh, labels in order to go after them for being banned from this conference. They, they didn't need to be there. Because the fact is that the national conservative or the, these conservative nationalists are moving in the direction of the alt-right to the point where soon we won't be able to take the difference. Now, in the sense the right has become as tribalist as the left. So the left wants identity politics. The left identifies and argues identity politics. Elizabeth Warren used the fact that she was so-called Native American, of course she wasn't, in order to get a job. They love their identity politics. It's all about identity politics. The left are racists. And the way the right combats that is by being racist. The way the right combats the tribalism of the left is by being tribal. The way the left combats the economic fascism of the left is by e being economic fascist. The left always wins in America in the long run because the left is intellectual. The left is more consistent. The left dominates our educational institutions. And all that happens is the right becomes the left. And here the right is becoming the left. All of you who claim, well, the Nazis are not the right, the Nazis are the left. Yeah, that's right. In a sense, they're all the same. Now, I think there are differences. And I think it's worth holding the right and the left as different. I think that there's a difference between fascism and socialism. They're all the same in the end. They're all, they're all authoritarian, collectivistic slaughterhouses. But it's useful to see those trends on the right and to see those trends on the left and to see them converging and to see how the left is ultimately dictating the terms of debate. There are a few voices out there on the right. I don't know, some neocons, some leftover neocons, uh, uh, what's his name, George Will, a few others who are arguing against this national conservatism or conservative nationalism. I prefer conservative nationalism. But that's it. The only other big difference between conservative nationalism and the left is the religion they advocate. Conservative nationalism truly believes that America needs to be, should be, must be a Christian nation. So as part of their big time agenda and in part of their bucking whatever quote libertarian trends they have been in the Republican Party, they are advocating for using the power of the state to address problems like the opioid crisis, which is largely a cause by the state, the use of pornography by teenagers, so they want to ban pornography, certainly by, by teens, I don't know how you do that, the overwhelming influence of Silicon Valley in our economy, they want to break up Silicon Valley. So they want to use a Christian set of ethics. Of course, they want to ban abortion. They want to do all the classical classic things that, uh, that, that conservatives have always wanted. Now, above all else, they say, oh, so that's their religion. Their religion is very much theology. Their religion is very much Christianity. And that's what they want to impose on all of us. And again, if you read Stephen Bannon, it's straight out of Stephen Bannon. Stephen Bannon has taken over the Republican Party. I mean, it's true that Trump kicked him out early. But Stephen Bannon has dominated the Trump presidency and is now the most influential person, not directly, I guess, but indirectly on the Republican Party. What is the religion of the left? Well, 
maybe it's environmentalism. Or maybe the left doesn't have a religion, and that's the difference. The left is just, some of the left is just nihilistic. Now, I don't believe a lot of these intellectuals on the right are actually religious. Again, I think religion is just a way for them to achieve what their ultimate goal is. And listen to this. This is their ultimate goal, they said at this conference. What they want to do is promote national social cohesion. They want to overcome social and political polarization and rebuild a sense of shared community and national destiny. They argue that the problem with liberalism, liberalism not in the leftist sense, but liberalism in the historical sense, the classical liberal sense, the problem with liberalism is individualism. The problem with America has been too much individualism, too individualistic. What we need, what we need, is, there a, is more collectivism, more community, more national destiny. That, by the way, they took from the neocons. National destiny and shared community is something neocons always had, but neocons viewed our achieving national destiny by taking over the world or by bringing democracy to the world. These people want national destiny and social cohesion, a shared community by using government to impose its will on our thinking. Yeah, Dan, I mean, Dan says it's straight out of neocon thinking. It is. They've taken elements of the neocons, and of course many of them are former neocons. They've taken elements of neocons, but they apply it to a different set of problems. They apply it to the middle class. They apply it to the working class. And how do we create national cohesion about some national project? They want, and this is straight out of Elizabeth Warren, I mean, they want to embrace a vision of, quote, the nation that assists people where they are. God forbid you get in that car and drive to where the jobs are. We're going to bring the jobs to you, just like Elizabeth Warren said. We're going to do R&D everywhere. I mean, there are so many parallels between what these people are talking about, what she is talking about. On the economic front, it is stunning. And of course, on the collectivistic stunt, on the nationalism side, she just chooses to call it patriotism because nationalism is a term associated with the right. So she's embraced patriotism. But there's no difference. Their visions are the same. They say the nation is just a community of communities. And we must build trust among these communities. How? With the government imposing its will on all of us on dictating our morality, and on dictating our economics. Which plants go where, who manufactures what, and where, and what do our kids see on the internet? That is the job of government. Now, look, I've always, this has always been in the background of the right. This has always been there. But it is so much more explicit. It is so much more explicit. And the similarities between left and right are so much more evident today. And as the left has become more, more leftist, moved further out to the left, the right just follows them right there. The right just... The left and right are fighting over power, over power over our lives, over power how to dictate our lives, how to control and manipulate our lives. That's it. The differences are negligible, are insignificant when it comes to these kind of policies. Now, it's true. On the right, there's more opposition to this. In, or at least in the Republican Party, there are still a few remnants of pro-free market people, at least some free market, that are resisting some of these economic policies. How long do they have? How long will they survive? How long will they be successful if America embraces 
these views. Not very long. In the long run, we are doomed, and it doesn't matter who wins, left or right. I know some of you would rather live under Nazi Germany than communist, under the Soviet Union. I don't want either one of them, and I view them as equal evils. Some of you would rather live under a Christian theocracy than under leftist socialist rule. I don't want either one of them. I'll f I think we should fight both of them to the death. Give me liberty or give me death is real. It's a slogan nobody understands, certainly not any of these people we're quoting. But it's, it means something. It means something. And what we face today is not death. And you've already caved. So many of you have already caved. You've already given in. Oh, the left is so bad. I'm going to embrace these wonderful people on the right. Because they at least love America. They don't have a clue what America is. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes.